Uh -huh. Good morning, everybody. It's Sunday morning, uh, May 17th. 20 May? Yeah, Whoa. July 17th, wow. 2022. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just, yeah, I don't know why I said May. But anyhow, here <laughs> we are. And uh, so we are here to worship God and to experience His presence in our lives. And uh, so that's why we're here today. Yeah, good morning and welcome to church. My name is Donna Schuler. This is Robert Schuler, and uh, this is part of the Robert Schuler Ministries, a church with no walls. And we've been calling it a church with no walls for <laughs> decades now because yeah. we've always gone outside the walls of a building to bring the good news to people because people everywhere around the globe need to hear about the love and the freedom found in Jesus Christ. So we welcome you to church. We're glad you found us or we're glad you, you tuned in and, and to this broadcast that we do every week for many, many weeks. And we also have a live church in-person service with a couple walls, uh, but you don't have to be in the walls. We have a walk-in indoor outdoor drive-in church which is it uh, we so it's a walk-in drive-in church yes it is it's a walk-in <laughs> drive-in you can walk in you can sit inside you can sit outside you can stay in your car and that's located at the Newport Beach Civic Center in the community room at 100 Civic Center Drive Newport Beach I actually had somebody call me yesterday and say you're not meeting in the Civic Center surely and I said yeah there's a beautiful <laughs> building there she was familiar with the area but wasn't familiar with the building. She knew of the library, the um, Newport Beach Library is on one end of this beautiful, long grassy field, and we're on the other end, but she didn't know that there's this gorgeous little community room. So if for nothing else, you should tune in just for a while to see this great room we, we are renting every week. And uh, you know what, it has a lot of beauty in it. It's great architecture, it's surrounded, I already said grass, but there's, a walking path, it's a mile long in a circle, well, sort of a, not a circle, it's in a uh, return loop all the way back to and from this, uh, the community room and it's a sculpture garden. So it's a really unique place. And I mean, sculptures that are, sculptors that are really, re sculptures done by sculptors that are really great. <laughs> that word is always funny because you get hard tea or soft tea, depends on the product or the person. <laughs> so let's let me let me start by giving an opening sentence this is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and let us be glad in it dear Heavenly Father we thank you for this time where we can come together and worship you for you alone are our God and so we come humbly uh, in, in, in grace and clothed in righteousness because of the saving grace of Jesus Christ so touch every heart and mind and soul with your presence, your reality, and your goodness, we pray. Amen. Amen. And, you know, for those of you that don't know, we have something called The Call. We've been doing for 11 years, and it's on here on Robert Schuller Ministries Live. And, of course, it's not live now. We're in church, but it's always on the 15th at the, of the month at 6 p.m. Pacific time. And the reason I mentioned that, it was just Friday night. We said, gosh, we feel like we were just sitting here. Yeah, we were. <laughs> we were we were, were just here. sitting here Friday yeah. night, uh, Friday evening, 6 p.m. 36 Pacific. hours ago. Exactly. So um, anyway, if you'd like to see that call, you just, you can scroll down anytime. And like I said, you can actually search for it on the 15th of every month. Or if you want to hear it, it's, it's actually recording for our podcast. And many of you may not know. Robert Schuler Ministries, we've had a podcast for 11 years. Before people even knew, I remember trying to find out how to start a podcast. Nobody knew. Even the young people. I went to young people. I oh, don't know. What's you a know? podcast? What's a podcast? <laughs> so now we're on every different platform you can imagine. But if you just... If you go into your Google search bar and put Robert Schuler Ministries podcast, it'll come up. And what we do typically is we've, through the years, we've interviewed a very interesting guest in the uh, expert, you know, experts in body, mind, uh, soul, health, uh, meaning pastors, meaning, uh, gosh, great politicians that are not politicians so much yeah we we have had we've had a congressman mm -hmm. on before and his wife straight from washington dc i remember yeah, that yeah. that was early on was so many years ago but there's it's worth looking at uh and we'll talk a little bit more about our website 
during the announcements, which that sounds like the announcements, but you know, <laughs> I guess I got a little carried away. Well, while you're on a roll, since you're on such a great roll, why don't you go ahead read and the read scripture. the scripture and prayer and all that? We'd love back. to. Yes, it's always my honor, my privilege to read the scripture that uh, my husband picks out for me to read that will complement his message. And he's continuing to go through a series from Isaiah 40. And the title of this series is Developing the heart of a lion and what does it take to develop the heart of a lion so that we can get through you know some pretty trying times all of us have them and uh, anyway the Lord is still blessing the United States of America so here are these words from John John 17 verses 14 through 27 a man approached Jesus and knelt before him Lord have mercy on my son he said he has seizures and he's suffering greatly he often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. You unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy and he was healed at that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, why couldn't we drive it out? And he replied, because you have so little faith. Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. When they came together in Galilee, he said to them, the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him, and on the third day he will be raised to life and the disciples were filled with grief. After Jesus and his disciples arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the two drachma temple tax came to Peter and they asked him, doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he does, he replied. When Peter came into the house, Jesus was the first to speak. What do you think, Simon, he asked. From whom do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes, from their children or from others? From others, Peter answered. Then the children are exempt, Jesus said to him. But so that we may not cause offense, go to the lake and throw out your line. Take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and you will find a four drachma coin. Take it and give it to them for my tax and for yours. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Um, Thank you that you heal people. Thank you that you oversee the nations, that you oversee the taxes, that you oversee any kind of financial problems we may be going through, any kind of, um, any kind of questions we have in our future, in our jobs, in our careers, in what you would have us to do, maybe on when to retire and when not to retire. Lord, we know that you are the ultimate powerhouse and you are the ultimate knower of all things through your knowledge Lord we we come to you we open our spirits and our souls up to your healing we ask you to give us more faith when people are ill when people are suffering we need to remember that you have given us the same power to heal we must only have the faith to believe. Lord, I pray for faith that moves mountains, for faith that is only as small as a mustard seed, because you tell us that if even if our mustard seed faith is so very, very tiny, and maybe it's fresh and new, maybe we're new Christians and it's fresh and new, and we're just beginning to trust you, Lord. But you remind us, that as long as it's like that little mustard seed, that that's enough. That's enough to, to help people, to heal ourselves, to heal others, to, to breathe new life into people just by being around them and being the light in a dark world. Lord, we thank you for your leadership, for your guidance in our lives. We thank you that we turn everything over to you, our joys, our sorrows, our questions. And Lord, we, we thank you that you are non-judgmental and that you love us through everything. 
In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So Robert's coming back here. So as a reminder, we have a 10 a.m. service. We'll be on lot. We'll be here on Facebook Live again, and we're also in person down at the Newport Beach Civic Center in the community room, and it's a lovely spot. So uh, in Newport Beach, California, obviously you have to be in Southern California to make it to a 10 a.m. service, but we'd love to have you anytime. Yeah. So one of the things we do on every service that we have is we collect an offering, and the reason we do that is to display our faith in God. And we do that in a tangible way through our gifts and our offerings. That's part of our worship. And so we collect an offering every Sunday and we're not in a position to be able to pass an offering plate through Facebook or through media. Uh, but what we do is we encourage you to give in a variety of different ways. One way is you can send a check to 26 Canyon Island Drive, Newport Beach, California. That's 26 Canyon Island Drive, Newport Beach, California. Uh, you can make the check out to Robert Schuller Ministries. It is a nonprofit church, uh, so it is tax deductible. And uh, so, so all of your donations are tax deductible. Uh, we want to encourage you to support this ministry or other ministries with your tithes and your offerings. And it's not, it's, it's not imperative that you support this ministry, even though we use the funds very prudently and uh, we use it very well to be able to reach as many people as possible with the good news of Jesus. So it is an investment in the kingdom of God. Uh, I want you to know that first and foremost, if you wish to support this ministry. Uh, there are a couple other ways to, to give as well. Uh, probably the easiest way, if you have Venmo, is to use our Venmo account. It's Robert Schuler Ministries, and uh, you can you can make a Venmo contribution that way, and an and a offering of your your faith to God. And then the third way is to go to our website. And do you want to talk about our website a little bit, Don? Sure. Our website, the address is drschuler.org. That's D-R-S-C-H-U-L-L-E-R.org. Or if you'd like, just stick with robertschulerministries.org. It's a little bit longer, but it takes you to the same homepage. There's a little button on the upper right that says, I'd like to give. And it'll take you through a couple prompts. It'll take you probably a minute to a minute and a half to sign up to give that way and it's pretty painless and easy and if you feel called in your heart to give something on a weekly basis it doesn't matter we have people who give five dollars a week ten dollars a week all the way up and it's very beneficial for the ministry especially going through the summer months mm -hmm. when um, yes. a lot of church attendance uh, traditionally has dropped off in-person church and online church so you know ministries most of you may not think about this but ministries uh, work off their tithes and offering, offerings for about the first, what, three quarters of the year. And then up, up, up until November, we kind of, we just have to be really careful. So it's great to be able to know how to budget. We're always careful. Yeah. But, and I want to thank uh, the people that listen every week or whenever they can that actually are very generous to this ministry and have been throughout the years, throughout the months, throughout the weeks. We appreciate you. We cannot do this without you. We're partners in ministry. This isn't about Robert and I. We're just distributors of the words. We're just distributing hope, hopefully in faith, and teaching you more about Jesus. But ultimately, we're a team. So if we can ever do anything for you, one of our team members, please let us know. Write us with your prayer requests. We do answer all of our own emails. We don't have a administrative assistant unfortunately you know, some days you know, we don't at all we do everything ourselves, and uh, so you can write donna at schulerministries.org or robert at schulerministries.org and we will hear your prayer requests we will pray with you for you and we will actually return you will answer your email ourselves one of, one or the other of us yeah you, t you can tell us who you'd rather answer you back <laughs> that's fine too but uh we love you we appreciate you and thank you for whatever you feel called to give to this ministry yeah thank you very much you know one other way to give that we haven't talked about we rarely talk about it is in your wills and estates that's true. many people give and that ends up being the largest gift that they ever give 
And uh, so, so that's another way that you can give, again, that we rarely talk about. You can include this ministry, the Robert Schuller Ministries, in your wills and estates, and uh, it will make a huge difference for this ministry, and uh, it'll be a lasting legacy for, of, uh, of your life as uh, you give uh, everything. So again, thank you for what you give. Thank you, Donna, for being here. Okay. And uh, time to walk the dog. Yeah. Up here. Yeah. Go. Go walk the dog. Well, have a great day. Listen to and Robert's gonna... <laughs> message. And uh, yeah. maybe we'll see you back here at ten. Otherwise, we'll see you next week Sunday at eight a.m. Pacific time. Yeah, so I'm going to tell a few stories, and, and at first you, they, you may not realize how they tie together or what, how they make any sense at all. But, but uh, I want you to I, I want you to to realize that these stories aren't just pulled out of the air. There's a reason why I'm telling them and sharing these stories with you. First one has to do with uh, the rains in Africa. You know, we Don and I were in Uganda a few years ago, and while we were there, all of a sudden the rains would come down, and the rains were like nothing I've ever seen before. I didn't realize how large a raindrop could be. Uh, I, I thought a raindrop was was minuscule. There, they're about a teaspoon. Uh, and that's probably an exaggeration, but I'll bet a half a teaspoon is not an exaggeration. They're absolutely huge. You go outside and you're, you're in the rain for, for 10 seconds and you're, you're just drenched. Uh, we just don't have rain like that in Southern California. We have more mists where the raindrops are, are hardly noticeable sometimes. You, you just know that after a while you have to turn the windshield wipers on to, to get the water off the windshield if you're driving. And, and, and it could be from that and they'll get larger drops, but nothing the size of the raindrops that we saw in Africa. Unbelievable experience feeling those huge giant raindrops. Then uh, a second story. My father and I went to New York City after 9-11. And in New York City after 9-11, uh, we remembered the, and had visions of the Twin Towers coming down. We were there within a week or two after those Twin Towers came down. And you may remember the vision of people running out of the dust cloud as those two towers were completely pulverized and dust covered the entire city and you would see the people running as fast as they could through this dust from this dust cloud and they were completely white with all of this dust over 2000 people were killed in that tragic event and yet very few bodies were recovered there was there were very few body parts and the question was what happened to everybody? What happened? Why aren't there uh, 2,000 body bags out here? Where is everybody? And the answer was the bodies were completely pulverized. So the answer is every, because the dust filled the entire city. People's homes had a film of dust on them. And, and the answer was the bodies are in the dust that they were wiping off their bookshelves that they were washing off of their bodies and as that they were sweeping off their floors the bodies were completely pulverized instantly to dust second a third story Don and I have been to the Philippines more than once. It's a beautiful nation, beautiful people, the most loving people in the world, and it is an amazing nation. The thing that makes it so amazing is it is all islands. There is over 7,600 islands in the Philippines. And we're not talking just, just a, an atoll. We're talking an island that's usually inhabited. I don't know how many inhabited islands there are, but I'd say most of the 7,641 islands of the Philippines are inhabited. And, 
And to be able to be in an island nation like that, connected through bridges or ferries or the like, it is really unusual and beautiful to see all these islands and the beauty of this land. That's the Philippines. Fourth story, redwoods. <laughs> I went to camp at Mount Hermon, California when I was in high school, and it was a two-week camp. It was called SILT, Christian Institute of Leadership Training. And so I'd go there and spend two weeks in leadership training, Christian leadership training. And I remember after, I went there two years in a row. And the second year I went there, one of the things I and a friend of mine decided to do is we're going to uh, we're going to climb to the top of this redwood tree because here this camp, uh, Mount Hermon, is in the middle of this redwood forest. It's, and so the cabins are in the redwoods, and it's absolutely a beautiful Christian conference center. So my friend and I, at the end of the camp, so we wouldn't get in trouble, or if we get in trouble and got kicked out, it would be the, we wouldn't miss anything, because at the very end. So at the very end, we, we managed and figured out how to get to the first branch. We had already scoped it out. From there, we just keep climbing up these branches until we get to the very top. And I'll bet that tree was 200 feet tall. And the base of the tree was, was had a diameter of probably 10 feet. And because uh, I knew it took at least three people holding arms to get around the base of that tree. So we started climbing up this tree and we went to the very top. And when we got to the very top, we took a picture of ourselves. And what's interesting is when you're at the top of a tree and you're taking a picture of your friend at the top of the tree, the top of the tree looks like it could be the top of any tree. It looks like you could have climbed a, 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 a 10 foot tree and took a picture of yourself. That's what the picture looks like. I've got long hair at the time because it was in the 70s and I had I think it was 1970 or 71, and then I had, uh, and then it was a foggy day because we're up at the top of this tree, and so here I am. I have a picture of myself in the top of this tree within a within the fog, and that's the picture, and that's the tree, the redwood trees. So why do I tell these four stories? I tell these four stories because. I'm going through the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. And in Isaiah 40, we read these following words. Uh, because as I'm going through, we read today these words. Let's take them, and I begin reading the following. Surely the nations are like a drop in a bucket. They're regarded as dust on the scale. He weighs the islands as though they were fine dust. Lebanon is not sufficient for altar fires, nor its animals enough for burnt offerings. Before him, all the nations are as nothing. They are regarded by him as worthless and less than nothing. Think about that. Here we are as civilians in a nation. I don't know where you're watching this from. We, we have people who watch us from South Africa, from the Netherlands, from most of them, most of the people who watch are from the United States. We get people from Canada, from Australia, New Zealand. And part of that is because back in the, in, in the first decade of the 21st century, uh, I was a pastor of a ministry which was had offices in all of these places, and we still have some influence as a result of it. But, but regardless of what nation you're in, whether it's the United States of America, Russia, China, it doesn't matter. All of the nations on planet Earth from the beginning of time to the end of time are what? like a drop in the bucket to God. <laughs> God really doesn't care about nations. There's only one nation that God cares about, one kingdom that God cares about, and that is the kingdom of God. So if you're a citizen of, 
of Pakistan, if you're a citizen of Uganda, if you're a citizen uh, of any country in the world, it doesn't matter what country in the world you're a citizen of, the most important citizenship you need to acquire is the citizenship to the kingdom of God. And how do you do that? First and foremost, you have to come and recognize that God is God. The Ten Commandments make it perfectly clear. Commandment number one, you shall have no other gods besides me. Commandment number two, do not make for yourself a graven image. Don't, don't go and make images of other gods. Uh, and number three, honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And the Ten Commandments, if you follow those Ten Commandments, you will have a beautiful start into entering the kingdom of God. But it's only a start. The citizenship is stamped and sealed when we come to know Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord. Why? Because we are all sinners. And as sinners, we need to be saved by grace and only Jesus Christ gives us that grace and gives us that cloak of righteousness. So when you profess Jesus Christ as Lord, that's what the Bible tells us, you declare Jesus Christ as Lord, you will be saved. And it is at that point that you become a citizen of the kingdom of God. Will you be perfect at that point? No, you'll continue to sin. I continue to sin. Everybody continues to sin. But we are saved through grace, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, coming back to developing the heart of a lion, first and foremost, recognize who God is. God is bigger than any nation. We look at the nations of the world, and I, I, people are concerned about this nation rising and that nation rising and, and the powers of this nation and the other nations. And the fact of the matter is, it all means nothing in the eyes of God. It's like a drop in the bucket. Even if it's a ugandan size African drop, a half a teaspoon, it only takes, it only takes 1,500 of those half teaspoon drops to make a bucket. But if it's a California-sized drop, it takes a, a half a million or more. Here's the facts. The nations are like a drop in the bucket. That's what we read. Surely the nations are like a drop in the bucket. They are regarded as dust on the scales. A scale. And in the time of Jesus, they had scales that were balances. And, when this, and then on one side you would put the weight and on the other side you'd put the thing you want to you wanna weigh until it was balanced. Then you know how much it weighed. And we still, those are still the most accurate scales you can find. And, and um, dust on that scale means absolutely nothing. You can, it's so hard to, to weigh dust unless you have a mass of dust, in which case you don't have just a just fine dust, you have this mass of, of dirt and, and garbage. But when we think about dust in relationship to the Bible, one of the things that immediately comes to mind is the fact that from dust we are made and to dust we return. Life is here today and it is gone tomorrow. Life is short and the dust on the scales are not much, if any, if anything. And that's the way the nations are to God. In relationship to God, they are as nothing. What does God want from you as an individual? God wants you to be first and foremost a citizen of his kingdom. And when we join his kingdom, then he wants us to be the best citizen to our to our nation on earth that we can possibly be. So here we are in the United States of America today, and the United States is facing grave challenges. 
In fact, I think the, the challenge that the United States is facing is a world challenge and an attempt for world dictatorship in a, in a world battle by uh, such forces as the World Economic Forum, uh, uh, the World Health Organization, uh, and other world institutions that wish to imply their theism onto the world. What do I mean by that? I believe that there are three main world theisms taking place today. Number one is scientism, to replace God with science. Number two is communism, to replace God, take God out of all kinds of education, take God out of, out of our nations, take God out of society, and make everybody the same. And the only way you do that is to tear the, the people who are doing good down to the poor, and then everybody is equally poor. And that's communism. So you have the religion of, of, of communism, the religion of scientism, and then you have the religion of environmentalism. And that's what we're experiencing geographically today. That's what's taking place in the Netherlands with the tractor strikes. The, the religion of environmentalism will not allow the, the, the farmers to farm because supposedly the, the nitrates from their, from their animals, the nitrates that they need to fertilize their fields are being withheld and they have to meet certain restrictions all in the name of environmentalism. They're worshiping and putting the environment above humanity, above God. God knows what he's doing. God created this world. He knows what it takes to grow plants. He knows what it takes to grow healthy animals. He knows what it takes to, to, to create an environment that can sustain this planet. And our nations are trying to implement this religion of environmentalism upon society that is that the society in, and that doesn't fit in with the, the dictates of God. So we need to put God first. You shall have no other gods besides me. It is God who grows the planets, the plants. It is God who creates the planets. It is God who helps the plants to grow. It is God who feeds the animals for our for our sustenance, and we as human beings need plants and animals to live healthy human lives. And I could talk about health and wellness and my, my influence there, but, but I'm not going to go there anymore. Instead, I'm gonna, I want to get back to the whole idea of, of how God relates with nations. First and foremost, God wants to be in your nation and he wants you to follow his laws and his rules. And if you're in a nation that doesn't abhor murder, like the United States of America, we had a huge change in government with, with the reversal of, of Roe versus Wade, which, at, at, which acknowledges the, the unborn child as a life and a gift of God and allows the states to make some decisions. And I pray that more and more states across the United States will understand that life begins at conception and respect that life and do everything they can to help that life live and be everything that it's meant to be. Here in, the, here in the state of California, I am praying and I'm talking about AB 2223. Uh, it is already passed through committee and it will be coming to the California Congress, the California Senate, and AB 2223 allows full-term abortion of a healthy fetus a healthy, healthy fetus, a mother decides in the last week of her pregnancy, she doesn't want to deliver this baby, and as a result has the freedom to take its life. That's murder. I, can't, I don't know any other way to describe it than that, and that is happening in the state of California. There's one other state in the United States, as I understand the state of Maine already has passed that law, and a mother can choose to do that with her unborn child. 
It's murder. God will not respect a nation that practices murder. So, here's a couple quotes I want to share with you. Now, and the first quote is an anonymous quote. I don't know where it came from. It says that sometimes the best thing to do is to do nothing at all and let God do the fighting for you. That sounds good in most circumstances. But the thing to remember is sometimes, sometimes the best thing to do is to do nothing at all and let God do the fighting for you. Sometimes, not all the time. What has happened in a lot of churches in America today is they won't get involved in politics in any way, shape, or form. They won't talk up and talk talk about AB 2223 in the state of California that allows full-term abortion and say, no, we have to stop that. We have to contact our congressmen. We have to contact our senators. We have to contact our governor and say, say no, veto that bill, and do not allow that to take place in our state here in California. Sometimes the best thing to do is to do nothing, but not all the time. Because why? Because Plato, the Greek philosopher, said this, the price good men pay for indifference to public affairs is to be ruled by evil men. And when we are ruled by evil men, evil things happen. And we've experienced some of the evil over the last two years in the United States of America and in specifically in certain states like the state of California, which requires people to do things that are unjust, unscientific, and just have been declared by the dictates of the governments. Today, when we look at, at nations, we need to realize that nations are nothing but a drop in the bucket in the power of God. That God will have his last say. And that if nations don't follow the commands of God, God will not bless those nations. Period. It will not happen. So surely, continuing reading from Isaiah 40, I'm reading, I'm going to go through 15 through 17. Surely the nations are like a drop in a bucket. They are regarded as dust on the scales. He weighs the islands as though they were fine dust. Lebanon is not sufficient for altar fires. Uh, Lebanon is a country that was north of Israel. It still is north of Israel. And Lebanon was recognized for centuries as the place where you could get the finest cedar trees in the world. They came from Lebanon. In fact, David, when he built the temple for God, oh, I'm sorry, when Solomon built the temple for, for, for God in Jerusalem, he sent his workmen up to Lebanon to bring back the cedars. And the cedars of Lebanon were the finest trees in the world. And it, the hills were covered with them. There was more hills and more trees than you could possibly imagine. It's like the redwoods of California. Another way to say it would be the redwoods of California are not sufficient for altar fires for God. It doesn't matter how many cords of wood you, you cut and you create these altar fires, it's not sufficient. They are nothing in compared to the magnitude of God. It's like trying to compare the, all of the wood and all the fires and all the energy we have on planet Earth with the energy that is in the sun itself. When, you know, as a child, we made these uh, uh, science projects. We, put, we had the sun in the middle and we had all the planets that would, would be hanging around it. The only problem is we never had, or, or in the school that I went to, they never gave us the right uh, dimensions uh, of styrofoam for the sun and, and our planet Earth. The sun was a little bit was bigger than the planet Earth, but the fact of the matter is the sun is enormously bigger than planet Earth. I don't have the statistics with me. I'll get it for the next message because I didn't know I was going to talk about this. 
but but I, my guess is there's a hundred or more Earths that can fit into the sun. And I, I don't know, but like I said, I'll get that statistic. If somebody wants to Google that and let me know how many, how many Earths can fit in the, in the sun, it'll tell you. And that tells you how immense the sun is. And that's just one star that, that God created. And God created all the stars. And for some reason, we think that an altar fire to God is going to impress him. <laughs> the fact is that nothing we do can impress God. God has given us a gift, Jesus Christ. And his command is this, call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. <laughs> and then you have what's called the helmet of salvation and, the, the, and nothing can take that away from you. You can fail in your sins, you can fail in your life, but the helmet of salvation will remain pure and it will give you a ticket to heaven. In fact, I still have a few tickets to heaven if anyone wants it, uh, wants them. There, I, I wasn't planning on talking about this either, otherwise I'd show a picture of the ticket to heaven for you. But I only have a few. But if you want one and you want to mail, send me a letter or send me your, your address, I will mail you some uh, because it is just a piece of plastic. But the piece of plastic you carry with you and it just reminds you of your commitment to Jesus Christ and your understanding of your relationship with God through his son Jesus. That it is there that we find our salvation and our hope. So here we are as a people, as nations coming before God and the altar fires of all the woods on planet Earth are not sufficient enough. Nothing can save us but except God gave us his, the gift of his son, Jesus Christ. And you can take all the animals on planet Earth and sacrifice them to God like the environmentalists are trying to do. They're trying to take all of the farm animals to feed humanity. And because they create too much nit nitrates and pollute the earth too much, we're going to get rid of all the farm animals as if that's going to somehow be enough for their environmental religion. It's not. It never will be. But in, the pla and in, in its place, they're going to sacrifice, make human sacrifices through starvation. What for? to their God environmentalism. Here we are as Christians and as people today. And what do we have to put first? We have to put first God. Put him in front of environmentalism. Put him in front of communism. Put him in front of scientism. And realize that God alone is God. And as we put him first, everything else is going to come into place. As we quit murdering babies, God's going to bless us in ways we can't imagine. The rains are going to come. He's going to water our fields. He's going to bring the nitrogen and the health to our soils and to our nations. We're not to be stupid about it. That's not what I'm saying. We want to create an environmental, healthy uh, nation and world. But it doesn't happen in the twinkle of an eye, in the blink of a moment. So Charles Finney, he, he died in 1875, and Charles Finney was involved in the, uh, in the revival that took place uh, in the world, and specifically in our nation in the 19th century. He said this, no government is lawful or innocent that does not recognize the moral law as the only universal law. And God is the supreme lawgiver and judge to whom nations in their national capacity as well as individuals are amenable. And Coulter, many of you may be familiar with her, she says that liberal doctrines are less scientifically provable than the story of Noah's Ark. 
but their belief system is taught as fact in government schools, while biblical belief systems are banned from government schools by law. That's in the United States of America and several other nations around the world. We will find, and the nations of the earth will find health, healing, wholeness, and prosperity when they focus their eyes on God, they put God back in our schools, they start teaching the Ten Commandments, they start encouraging people to understand and read the Bible and find direction and guidance from God. When that happens, the nations will prosper. Before him, all the nations are as nothing. They are regarded by him as worthless and next to nothing. We find our hope, our salvation, not in the dictates of our country, not in the dictates of our, of our law system, legal system, but we find it in the grace of Jesus Christ, who is the bridge between us and our, and, and our God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Please, 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 profess your faith in Jesus Christ. Look to God. I mean, if you want to talk about science and God, just look at the odds that life exists. It's one in ten, one, one in ten to the fortieth power that life could even exist. That's the scientific reality. That doesn't just happen by coincidence. It just doesn't fall into place. There has to be a designer and a creator. Mathematically, you cannot come up with any other reason that that could possibly happen. Trust the reality. Trust your gut. Trust the instinct that God gave you. He is calling. Trust that. Come to him in prayer and say, God, forgive me. And God in his grace and his love will embrace you and bring you into his family. And you've faced challenges in, in the United States as we face these challenges internationally around the world, as we face this attempt of a one-world governance that's doing everything they can to gain control of the world. And we realize that as we continue to, to focus on God, we don't have to worry about that. Even if they are successful, God in all his majesty <laughs> reigns supreme, and even a one-world governance is a nothing but a drop in the bucket. Even a one world governance is nothing more than, than, than dust on the scales. Even a one world government is nothing more than, than the islands is fine dust and the altars and the animals sacrificed to God. Put your trust in Him. Put your focus on Him. Trust in Him. And then work like it all depends on you to make a difference in your nation, in your community. Run for the school board. Take our schools back. Run for the water commissions because even water is being used against us. I could go on talking about that. I started talking about it a couple weeks ago, but I'm not going to go there now. All I'm going to say is focus on the fact that you can do something. And just don't do nothing. God has created you with power and the ability to do great things. Trust him and move forward in faith. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you're a God who loves and a God who cares. We thank you, Lord, that we have the privilege to be able to come together and to worship you. So we pray, O oh Lord, that your goodness and your graciousness will continue to abound in this world. We love you, and we praise your name, always and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord grant you his peace. And you're lying down, and you're rising up, and you're laboring, and you're leisure, in your laughter, and in your tears, until you come to stand before Jesus in that day in which there is no sunset and no dawning. 
Amen. God loves you, everybody, and so do I. God is blessing you. Bye-bye.